Selling your own inventory on eBay is probably the most stable way to build an eBay business. However, eBay inventory management comes with few challenges you have to overcome. The first one is cash flow. You need to have enough money to pay all your expenses and to invest in stock and new product ideas. Now remember, you start with initial investment. Let's say you start with $10,000, you buy stock, you put all your money into stock, now you start selling. If you will not do the right calculation, if you will not make sure you're in enough profit, you will not have enough money to roll over because all the time you need more inventory than sales in order to grow because if you want to make more money, you need to sell more products. If you sell more products, you need to have more inventory, right? So cash flow is one of the challenges that comes with selling your own inventory and you need to do it smartly and you need to know how to move dead stock to have enough cash flow. The second thing is warehouse space. Eventually when you buy more and more stock, you will have warehouse loaded with product till the level that you don't have enough space in your warehouse. Now, of course, that ideal is that you make enough profit to take another warehouse to grow, but you want to optimize the existing warehouse. You want to make sure it's organized. You want to make sure it's easy for you to find the products. You can uh, be productive, you know, pack and prepare the price for shipping and do everything in a smart and optimized way. And one of the things that again challenge this is when you bring products, when you buy stock and you don't sell all of it. Now, this is the thing with, with selling your own inventory. You will never sell everything. You will always have few products left from this, few products left from this. This is how it is. From time to time, you will find products that you don't just go out of stock. So you need to know what to do with these products that are not selling. In this video, I'm going to address inventory management from a different angle. Instead of teaching you how to solve existing problems, I will show you what actions you can take to solve them in advance by using data to make product decisions and by using and upgrading your optimization skills. And as I mentioned before, one of the biggest challenges is getting rid of dead stock of listing the not selling. So by the end of the video, I'm going to address it and I'm going to teach you reverse engineering, how you can reverse engineer your listing to move dead stock increase your cash flow and free space in your warehouse. So sit down, relax, and let's get started. So what are the three sourcing actions you can take in order to optimize your inventory in advance? Number one, you source products with high demand, only high demand. A lot of people source products because they like them, because they think they will sell and they find out only after they purchase the inventory and try selling it on eBay that these products are not selling because they have no demand. So you have to use data to make sure that the product you source have high demand based on volume of transactions and monthly revenue from the top of the search result. Number two, source products with unique selling proposition. Now, strong, unique selling proposition is crucial. Why? You come to a new market, you're a new seller in the market, and you want that people will come, that buyers will search the product and will pick your product instead of your competitor products. So you need to have an advantage. Maybe a bundle, maybe a new color, maybe a new model or a new brand or anything that can add value to your listings so buyers will choose your products instead of your competitors. Number three, sell the product with the right market price or below it. You want to be competitive. eBay is a buyer platform. If you will sell too overpriced, you will not get any sales, okay? So you have to make sure you either around the market price or below it to be even more competitive. A lot of sellers are listing products with, with high prices and then they don't sell anything and they don't realize that they're just overpriced. So when you do the sourcing process and you need to decide which product to source, if you validate everything, you see the product have demand, you see the product have great unique selling proposition, but then you come up to the, to the profit calculation and you add all the expenses on top of it and you see that, you know what, I cannot sell this product for competitive price, then you should drop this product idea and look for another one because you don't want to waste your time purchasing stock and then investing time and money and then selling it too expensive so you don't sell anything. Number four is optimizing your title with the right long tail keyword phrases. Make sure you use keywords that drive relevant traffic that convert. And number five is optimizing your item specific. This is underrated actions. A lot of sellers not putting too much attention into item specific, but this is where 
a lot of added value is hiding. You can add the relevant keywords and increase your traffic to your listings by 10 to 25%, but you have to add only relevant keywords. So let's jump into my screen and I will show you now how I use the product research software Zeek Analytics to use data analytics to remove the guesswork and increase your success rate. Let's get started. We are inside Zeek Analytics and I'm going to show you now how you can optimize your inventory in advance by picking the right product, how you validate the demand, how you make sure you sell the product for the right price and how you make sure you have the right unique selling propositions to have a competitive advantage on your competitors. So I'm not going to dive in on all the details you see here because as we say, there is a focus for this video. So I'm going to go directly to the product research tool. So anytime you came across a product you want to sell on eBay or you find the suppliers with several products and you want to make sure these products have the right criteria to fit to sell on eBay quick, you go to the product research, you make sure your settings correctly. So this example, I'm going to use shipping location in the United States. So this is when you are uh, going to hold the inventory in the United States and send it on eBay.com. But it fits for all shipping locations and all eBay sites. And you can also filter by listing types and conditions, even filter by price feedbacks, negative keywords, exclude phrases and sales date range. But let's say you came across a supplier and you saw that you can get ladies messengers cross body handbags for a very good price. Or maybe you think it's a very good price or very beautiful designs and you want to see if this product have demand on eBay. You come to the product research tool and you type here the keywords. After you pick all the settings correctly, all the filters and you put the keywords, you hit the search button. What Zig does right now is take this keyword, search it on the eBay best match result, pull the listings from the first page, going through the transactions, the data, the prices, and just display you everything in a way that you can take clear decision. So first of all, to validate demand, take a look. Ladies messengers cross body handbag, have $37,000 in sales in the last 30 days from the top 100 listings on eBay. We're talking on the average product price of $33 and a sold item transactions of 1,180. The success rate on page one is 64% and the sell rate is 1,180. This means that based on this calculation, we are basically trying to get another perspective of the demand. So if we have 100 active listings on page one and 1,180% sell through, this means that we have around 11.8 potential buyers on every active listing on page one. So overall, we quickly were able to identify that this product have high demand, right? We also see the average product price. And after we validate the demand, we validate the success rate, we validate the sell through rate, revenue, transactions, we know there is enough demand, the success rate is good, and what is the average selling price? This is the next step where we scroll down, we look into our competitor listings, and we see if we can bring unique selling proposition to the market. Now, just to say one more thing about successful listings, about a success rate. 64% means out of 100 listings on page one, 64 sold at least one product in the last 30 days, which means a lot because if 64 out of 100 sold something, it's more positive that you will sell the product you list if you list it for, this, for the right selling price than not selling it, okay? And this is the type of products you want to sell. Now, after validating this, we scroll down and we start to learn our listings. Your job will be to learn the listings, what models, brands, colors, materials, and then see, okay, what I can do in order to bring product that will generate traction, right? The other things you want to do is to see, okay, which product sold, and this is what we see here. We see the product picture, the title, how many sales in 30 days, lifetime sales, and the selling price right now. And you learn everything about the product, everything about the results, the search result, and then you go back to your suppliers and you see if you can bring something that compete with the prices here, with the models and the view, with the materials, and you can also analyze the sellers here by looking in the where the sellers came from. You can see how many feedbacks you have, how many sales you generate for the product. And if you really want to dive deeper in analyzing the niche, which this is belong to another video, okay? But uh, I'll still show you how you do it. You click the scan seller button and with few seconds, just few seconds, you can see all the statistics of these sellers. How many listings they have, sold items, revenue, and what his top selling items. However, this belongs to another video, so let's get back to our training. So you observe everything and you make the decision. If you think you can bring a new model 
with similar materials, better style, maybe better materials, better size, with advantage in your competitor. You can sell it with a competitive price. So let's say if you want to compete with this style, you need to sell it around 15, right? If you want to compete with this style or with this one, it's a branded one, by the way, you need to look on the price and see if you can compete. So only after you go over all the checklists and make sure you have unique selling proposition, you have good pricing, you have advantage on your competitor in terms of the seller performance, only then you go and you buy inventory, just then. If you will do it, you will save tons of time, tons of times, money and effort by selling the right products. Then you will not need to deal with a lot of dead stock, with a lot of listings that are not selling, with warehouse full of stock that is not selling, etc., etc. So this will solve all your problem in advance. Now let's say you pick the product. Let's say this is the product you want to sell, okay? And you want to compete with this guy. Now, I would first of all make sure I can bring variation, have a different colors, but let's focus on what Z can help you with optimizing your title. This is the title you want to do. This is a waterproof messenger crossbody ladies handbag, right? So I'll take the keyword of this title. I'll go back to Z and I'll open the title builder. This is to optimize my title. I'll put it here. I'll make sure it's on the right setting. So location, United States, date range 30 days, sales date range 30 days, marketplace eBay, I'll click the search button. What Zig will do, it will take the top of the search result and break down all the top selling listings and will show you on the left side, the long tail keywords, how many searches they have per month and average, what is the competition, how many listings using this long tail keyword and how many sales it generated. Based on this, you can make sure which keywords to use to your title. Now, my tips, my methods to optimizing title is to go to the competitors I want to compete with, copy his title, okay? Always, always try to be better than my competitor. Go back to the title analytics, paste it here, and then start remove unnecessary keywords. So it's waterproof messenger crossbody ladies handbag bag again shoulder bag. You have twice bag, okay? So I remove bag one here. I will save some space. All right, just right move woman and woman's purse. So now I freed. I have seventy one characters out of eighty, and then I'm gonna go and see which long tail keywords I don't have. So I have so bag shoulder bag. So we have shoulder bag basically. We have here messenger crossbody messenger crossbody. We have here. Handbag shoulder, handbag shoulder we have here. Waterproof we have. So all these things we have. You can move to the forward and see, okay, maybe there are other things you miss. So satchel, for instance, you have to see if this is a satchel as well. And then you can add here the keyword satchel. Now, of course, you have to make sure it's relevant. But what I did, I added only one keyword that missing to complete my title. So I used to write the winning title of my competitor, but I just a little bit optimized it to be a little bit different and added one keyword that can drive more traffic. So how to move that stock, sell all those products and listings that haven't sold for a long time. And the answer for this is reverse engineering. You need to analyze the niche, analyze your competitors, understand their USP, your unique selling proposition, their prices. And after you learn everything about the product and the niche, then you have to decide with yourself how low you can take the price down because eventually the most effective thing to move stock is to reduce price. Now, you don't want to reduce price too low uh, if the market price is higher than you will lose, right? So you want to first learn the market, then see what you can do to be more competitive. Uh, but eventually everything comes up to how low you want to sell the product, how low you want the price to be. I'm going to share my screen now and show you an example of how I reverse engineer a product, learn the niche, the market price, the keyword, and then take a decision together with you on what to do. Let's get started. So what I did, I found a product, I prepared a product here that is also a leather messenger shoulder purse sling bag, selling for $52 and have zero sales. We're gonna reverse engineer these listings like it was used, okay? So what I'm going to show you on these listings, you just take and implement on your own listings, okay? So the step number one in reverse engineering your listings is copy the title. You copy the title. You go back to the Zeek Analytics to the product research tool and you paste it here. And then you hit the search button. Now, what we will see now is all the listings that rank under this title, not a specific keyword or four keywords or five keywords, the complete 80 characters titles. We can see that there is 30 listings only one sold item. Statistics are very bad, only $40 revenue. We see that the average selling price here is $39.59. So first of all, we understand this title drive no demand, drive no traffic, right? Second of all, what we will learn here is that it's a very bad demand. 
at least the first product sold once, right? Once in the last 30 days and three times lifetime and sold for $43.99. While this product here is selling for $52, so it's even more expensive than this. So when I do this research, first of all, I learned that this is the wrong title to use. It's the wrong title because it doesn't drive any traffic. So the next step will be to understand and learn the niche. So I will copy again the title to a new product research. And now what I will do is I will remove all the unnecessary keyword. So we have leather, messenger, shoulder, purse, bag. Now you can remove the purse, bag. I will leave messenger and shoulder because we have this thing, which is a messenger shoulder bag. But uh, you need to kind of understand what are the keywords that define the niche and then go here and search for them. Now I will keep the leather keyword because it's important. We're selling a leather product. It's important to see the statistics of the leather keyword. After I did it, I will hit the search button. And now I will get more broad result because it has less keyword and only very specific searched keyword, keywords that define the product. And when we search this title, uh, this not a title, this uh, five keywords, we see that it generates almost $35,000 revenue in 30 days, 1,300 sold items, 71% success rate, 13, 1,300 sell through rate, and average selling price of $26. So first of all, based on this statistic, there is demand for this keyword and for the leather bags. But the average selling price is $26, while here product selling for $50. So we understand there is a price issue. What I will do next is I will look on the competitors here and I will try to see if there is any competitor which is similar to me and what price he has. Because I want to be very accurate with my listing optimization. So this product here is quite similar, not exactly the same, but leather one and with a hand $25, this one $32. And I will try to look for similar things. This one, $33, etc. Option one is to not keep digging and just reduce the price to around $35 and hope it will sell. But maybe you will lose a lot of money when, we, when reducing the price so low. So you can do another layer of analysis to try to find better opportunity and learn more about how you can sell this product. So I will open the product research again. I'll put these keywords here again. Okay. I may even remove the keyword purse. And I will use the price filter. Now, you know how much you bought the price. Let's say, for instance, this price, the break-even price here is to sell it in $35, for instance, or to sell it in $39. So you can come here and say, okay, I want minimum price. I'm willing to lose maximum $5 so for $39 to $34. The, the minimum price I'm willing to sell is $34. So you run the same product research analysis, but to filter products which are $34 or more. Now we click the search button. And let's see what the statistics and the results and what we can learn on the top ranking products under this specific price. Let's give it a couple of seconds. Here it's come. So first of all, interesting, $30,000, still a lot of uh, revenue, but sell to rate and success rate is much lower in the expensive prices. And now what I want to do is what are the top selling products? So statistics still interesting, less sell to less success rate in these prices. We can see that the first product is Michael Cross, is brand, brand, brand. There's a lot of brand product here. This is not a brand one. This is not a brand one. Sell for $22. And this is a brand as well. And by the way, you can use other things. This is interesting, $33. This is $38. You see, so this is almost similar to your product. Almost similar to your product, as you can see. Very similar, actually. $52, $38. So you will be able to almost sell it for break even in this case, okay? We say 39 is the break even, it's $1 less. So now what you want to do is to take the keywords that define this product, optimize the title, the same process we show in the, in the title builder, price it in this price, see if you can have a good item specific. You see this guy have very good item specific. Do everything, optimize your listings again, and do the editing of the price of the title and of the item specific you can also see if you have similar products like this guy this like a woman holding the bag so maybe you don't have it but if you have it this would be very helpful because you know this photo convert if not just keep it as is and you let it go you keep it for one week or two weeks if there is no sell you end the listings and you release it when you release the product it's again go to the top of the search results for a couple of hours or a couple of days and then uh, if this is not work, the only solution that I suggest you to do is not related to any optimization is to just list it as an auction for a minimum price and let's just hope people bid it higher. So guys, I hope you learn a lot. This is how you move dead stock. This is how you optimize your inventory. Before you even buy inventory, you just pick the right product. If you want to learn more about Zeek Analytics, there is a link in the description. If you have questions, you can comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next live. Ciao.